Hey everybody, this is Brian from PNB Homesteading. Wanted to give you the update for the uh, deck boxes. Let me grab the camera. There could be a little bit of difference we got going here. Take out some of the uh, plants and we planted some others. So we've taken out the white Russian kale and it's moved to the garden boxes up on our hillside, kind of up there. I might be able to show you that when I do our yard walk. Uh, but we've replaced it with the uh, marigolds, chives, and cabbage. So you can see I've got it kind of intermixed here. You know, I got chives, and then the marigold, and more chives, and then we got a cabbage. We got a marigold. We got cabbage. This is hopefully to hide it from the white moth from being able to figure out where the actual cabbage is. Once these things start to flower and put out their fragrance, and then the chives as well. Once they get to be you know a little taller and they have their, their flowers on there, it'll hopefully hide these so that way I don't lose these cabbage. I didn't have that much of a problem last year, I mean, because you can see down in our garden boxes I have quite a variance of different cover crops and stuff for confusing the uh, pest bugs. But uh, I was hoping that'd be kind of a little uh, deterrent and it will give a little bit of nice beauty up here on our deck. Instead of just looking at the, uh, the chard and all this kind of stuff in these garden boxes, we'll actually have some flowers intermixed with the actual edibles. And in this box, you know, we took out the spinach. Oh, I guess I should show the other other end of this box. So down here, I put in some uh, Curie Bay cilantro, a couple of rows of that, and then I've got the chives as well as some more marigolds. And in this box, took out the, uh, the spinach, and then this is going to be our bunching onion area. So as Paula gets more bunching onions, she'll be planting those in here. And then uh, that's our garlic chives there. And then over here, this used to be the, uh, the beta salad mix, and then we've left the uh, arugula to dry out and we can collect these seeds. So I just kind of push that to the side and then now we've got in here the chives as well as the marigolds and the center section is the cabbage. So hopefully it's going to be kind of a cool little experiment to see how well we can hide this from the, uh, the moth that loves to come and lay its eggs in here. You know I've been watching you know we do have some slug damage on some of these because they were down there with their companions sitting around our fire pit area and the slugs were crawling in there and eating on them. But uh, I kind of stuck those inside of a little tote so that hopefully they'll kind of keep the slugs away and I put some sluggo inside there to keep them from getting eaten further because those are going to end up in our garden boxes somewhere out there this summer. All right. Oh, wait, I forgot to do the chart. The, the kale. I've got the kale back here. This is our dates kale. And then this is the red Russian. You can see that's really full. This is the reason why we've been having such a hard time eating our... Uh, our salads under the house, our lettuce that I grow in the mid-sized tent is because we've got all this, you know, kale here that's really tasty and it makes such good summer salads that, you know, you put a nice vinaigrette on there and then, you know, I mean, in another week, you know, few weeks we're going to have our tomatoes coming in and I mean, I can't even imagine how good this is going to be having the salads out of this with our homegrown tomatoes. And that's my favorite part of the summer is when I get to do that. <laughs> and I'll pretty much completely forget we have, you know, food growing underneath our house. But uh, one experiment we were doing is uh, cutting off this kale that gets, you know, really leggy. You know, it gets real tall like this. We cut a couple of them off, Paul and I. And you can see down here, it's regrowing from the stump. As long as you leave enough here to where there's a few little nodule nodes or whatever you want to call them on here, they'll regrow. And so now we're going to have a whole new crop of kale coming in off of this, you know, existing, you know, I guess you call it, I don't know what you want to call it, a rootstock. But it's like, you know, you can see on this one here, you just cut it up enough to where there's still some nubs on there and you're going to be getting food off of that for you know continued who knows i mean you can keep going the whole whole time until we hit the winter so instead of having to replant i'm just going to cut some of these back like these really tall ones i'll end up snipping this thing off right about here and I'll just keep growing out new nodes down here because it'll want to survive which is always cool i love plants that can take care of themselves all right well it's been brian talk to you guys again bye